With only five months before term starts, the HLC's new curriculum is still a work in progress. For some, it's a little bit too late. I think they should have started a great deal earlier. When the building was started, the curriculum should be started because the school is more than a fantastic building, all singing, all dancing, with probes everywhere and interesting science going on. It's about the basic curriculum, and that needed really to start a long time ago. And Paul has been trying his best, but I think we're playing catch-up very much at the moment. OK. Paul Topping, head of secondary, gives staff an opportunity to have a say in how the curriculum should be delivered. I've always maintained that curriculum planning works best when it's a consultative process and any head of department or assistant faculty leader worth their salt is going to want to have an input into how their subject is uh, planned within the curriculum and how it's scheduled and timetabled. As ever, the amount of time allocated to modern foreign languages is a bone of contention. Low ability would get two and one hour of literacy and numeracy. I've created four option blocks so far, and Spanish sits with business, drama and IT. The other alternative is to take languages out of an option block and say, well, you've got to top that up outside of curriculum time if you really want to do it. It's all provisional at the moment, you understand. And there's a shock for Paul. His offer of extra maths time for students finding it difficult is not well received. How can I put this? I'm not sure that maths teaching has been a strength of the school in the past, and I want it to be a feature of HLC teaching, and I want the children to have access to the time that they need to be able to do that. Yeah. So that worries me because it could go against what we're trying to do in mainstream maths lessons because they'll see it as a bolt-on or an add-on mm -hmm. or a punishment because they're not good mm -hmm. enough to do other but subjects. But there's no, I mean, it's, it's not written in stone. If my department is doing its job properly, the students are set properly, all the, the right students are in the right place with the right teacher in front of them, and that and the programme should be built for them within, the, within that curriculum. But if you're saying, well, actually, we don't need that much maths time, I can redistribute it. And it's a long time since I've had curriculum leaders saying, well, actually, that's far too much time. Take it away from me. It's but always the reverse. But, but I think it's refreshing that Emma is saying, though, actually, if we're doing our job properly and we've got a bit of extra time in Year 7, mm -hmm. which is a springboard, because I think, I think what, what, what we're focusing on here, isn't it, is that diet of the kids in the week. As summer began, the labs in the secondary school are well advanced. The biomass boiler, which uses wood chips for fuel, is now commissioned. The server infrastructure for the ICT network is installed. And turf is being laid in the forum area. The primary leadership help InterServ make decisions about furniture. You've got a little bit of something you had last year, moving into something a little yeah. bit more grown up all the time. Absolutely. So we've weaned them from multicoloured chairs flower tables, the big grown-up chairs and big grown-up tables. <laughs> As a specialist college, the HLC will use state-of-the-art technology. With an online curriculum and schemes of work being posted on the school's server, how best to spend the £5 million allocation within the PFI contract is a crucial decision. If you wanted to interact with the board from your seat or you wanted to pass this around, then that's while the slate so the children could. The purpose of the slate is to be supportive of the board, additional to it. I do not want teachers standing at the front of the class all of the time. No, exactly. Everyone is impressed with the kit demonstrated, but InterServe's Mark Smith issues a reality check about just how much cash Jill has to play with. The budget was built up not using Promethea, mm. um, but based on some of the numbers that we've got at the moment, that you won't be able to no, I know. have what what yeah. you want, I know, yeah. um, for the budget that's set. Yeah. So what I would ask you to do is to go away and have a look at the prices if you can. Very happy to, to, to work that out. That's, that's, that's no issue at all. As an extended school, the HLC opens at 7 o'clock in the morning and won't close until 10 o'clock at night. Community facilities and an adult learning centre mean that visitors will be arriving throughout the day, so it's a challenging site to make secure. This is where the students are going to come in in September. They'll walk in here. This is a nice big area for them to circulate in. There'll be some seating around. And then they'll come towards these pair of doors. And at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, they'll be open. 
for students to move in and out of the secondary phase. But at other times in the day, they'll be locked and staff will be able to go through using their electronic key fob. CCTV surveillance is necessary in any new school. The system designed for the HLC marries discretion with a robust security policy designed to keep people safe. They're very discreet, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Very discreet. In this particular space where you've got a lot of people, they can be under continuous observation without thinking they are security mm -hmm. cameras. You know, they're within a, a sort of prison environment. It's just, it's just subtle, really. Erica Aston, Vice Principal in charge of the primary phase, leads the design of the primary English curriculum. We've got a change in framework, a change in thinking, a super new school to do it in. It's the best opportunity ever, isn't it, to, to get it right, really. With the HLC being an extended school with a cross-phase curriculum, there are concerns among some primary teachers that the agenda might be dominated by their colleagues from the secondary phase. But to see where you're coming from, it does look a bit at the moment as if Secondary's hijacked this, and secondary background people are having these conversations which may well impact on the way that you do your job. It doesn't have that feel around it, Bob, though, does it? At, at, at leadership level... Well, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't from where I'm sitting. Uh... There are lots of things about effective primary practice that secondary colleagues need to learn. And actually, if it's any way round, that's the way round it is. They're using acronyms I've never heard of. They're talking about PIPs and DEWs. We department that might be based around key ISP and PDMs. And so even a commonality of vocabulary, I'm going to have to be on a steep learning curve. I don't know what they're talking about. Three months before the HLC opens and the loose furniture has been delivered, the classrooms are coming on, but the leadership team has a few qualms about their staff to talk over. I think one of the things we probably haven't done right yet is to sort of explain carefully to the staff what each of our roles is from September. There's five of us, yeah, and if there's a crisis or whatever, there's somebody there. But also to be clear that we are not going to be firefighting. In June, a two-day staff conference is convened to help address these issues. Jill presents the vision for the new school, which opens in just ten weeks' time. The conference gives staff an opportunity to work with the leadership team at first hand. Unless you indicated me, to me that you wanted to change, I've kept you with the same tutor group. This document here is how the teaching structure is looking at the moment. All right. And the leadership team can assess just how ready the staff are for the challenges ahead. I sense at the moment that they're not ready to stand on their own two feet, mm. some of them and what we've got to do is, through our leadership of them, is say, yes, you can do that. No, you don't have to keep referring back to us. You are leading your faculty, you're leading your area, and we trust you to do that. The HLC is being handed over in two stages, the secondary school in August and the rest in January 2007. And although the contract specifies precisely what buildings should be handed over first, InterServe are able to give the principal extra space and facilities ahead of time. What we want to do is to give you 90% of that forum area. Mm, that would be fantastic. Um, the contractual we give you the red line yeah. that way, but we're looking to give you mm. majority of the, the forum, and also we'll try and give you the, the NEEP as well for the September handover. We think we can give Jill some benefit by handing over sections which are in excess of what we contractually obliged to hand over in September for the first phase. We might be able to give her the main sports hall, which is not due to be hand, handed over until January 2007. We may be able to give that to her at the October half term. With the secondary school ready for handover, the builder whose job has been to manage the construction programme is the master of the understatement. If I'm honest, it's another building to me. I don't look at it as if I'm offering somebody a school. I just look at it. My job is basically to build it. Yes, you have a certain amount of pride, and you know, I'm proud of what I've done, but I'm not looking for a pat on the back. Go and get me wages, quite happy, get the job done, move on to the next one. The secondary phase of the HLC will open on time. 
For Paul Topping and Jill Eater, it's the end of the beginning, and they can now reflect on how the workload of the past 12 months has taken its toll. It's been hard work. I wake up at three in the morning, just knowing that I've got to keep that particular plate spinning, or otherwise that one will fall down. I'm burning candle both ends here to try and get this thing complete. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not been easy. It has been constant pressure, absolutely constant pressure. From day one that I came into the job, it has been unrelenting. And I look back at it now and I think, so what have I spent five terms, 18 months doing? And then I, I walk around the building and I think, yeah, this is what we've achieved. The achievement is a school equipped for 21st century teaching and learning. They've been given the tools to do it. The challenge now for Jill Etuff and her team is to deliver on the promise of new opportunities for the young people of Hadley. September the 5th, 2006, first day of the first term at the HLC. Who wants to be first through to the new school? Four years ago, it was just an idea. Today, the HLC is open for business. Yes, oh, they're prompt. You won't be allowed yes, in the you're building too, unless Dan. your tie's looking like mine. Do you want me to do it for you? No, no. Well, do it yourself quickly then, please. That all-important first assembly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr. You're a very special year group for us because it will be what you achieve over the next five years that will be a measure of the success of the Hadley Learning Community. I see you. Not dead. Portrait. Just tell me I can print the timetable for the next ten minutes. No. <laughs> Problems. Hi, it's me. He's the way this Every single child has to have for them their timetable. But the data is corrupted, so all the work that was done has been lost. The issue isn't with the timetables, it's, it's with the kids in the teaching groups. If we haven't got the timetables printed out for the next lesson, we can just have to tell the kids where to go. I'm still group right down to the bottom, year nine downstairs. Do you know where you're going? Good. Good, good result. Good morning, Mr T. I'm just frazzled. There are inevitable problems with a new building, but the leadership team are glad that things are settling down. All the things that affect people's lives that we've tried to get right have worked well. So, it's been a great week. Great week. It's raining now. I know. Where's this rain come from? It doesn't rain in the Hadley Learning Community. The sun always shines. Mm -hmm.